day after the president's resignation, many in Peru are wondering what happens next. The country's Congress must decide whether to accept Pedro Pablo Kuczynski's resignation or proceed with a scheduled impeachment vote. I think we should accept the president's resignation. We should not reject it to then remove him. I think it would be absurd to do that. While many back accepting the resignation to ensure a smooth transition of power, other parties are calling for Kuczynski to be forced out for alleged corruption in his ties to disgraced Brazilian construction giant Odebrecht. If Kuczynski goes, it is because he's corrupt and immoral, and that should be clear for the whole of Peru. Kuczynski defiantly denied any wrongdoing in his resignation message and dismissed the secretly recorded videos released by the political opposition, which appear to show government figures attempting to buy votes. Such a rapid descent into political uncertainty is clearly not a good development for Peru or the region. The encouraging news is that as the country emerges from the crisis, the economic outlook should improve. Many questions remain, however, about the immediate impact. Martin Vizcarra, the first vice president, is likely to take over preventing the need for fresh elections. But some analysts don't see the new government as a long-term option. I would think it could work for a transitional government, but I'm not sure it could manage three and a half years. Who will be running the country come 2021, when Kaczynski's term was due to end, is still far from clear. Dan Collins, CGTN, Lima.